Hey guys, and welcome to another week of hobby. So this week we're going all in. I'm going to try to get as much done as possible. We've got a few more models out here, and uh, we'll see what I can do. Um, we've come a bit of a further way on this. I just finished the next step in this tutorial. So by the time this video uh, goes live, it will already be up from the day before. So I've, we've done the, the axe, which looks really cool now, and the shaft of the axe, and all the little metals, and you know, chain links and all that stuff that's on there and base colored in the the bone and the, the cloth so this is uh, now ready to sort of move on to the last stages so I'm really happy with how this has come out kind of see there but there's all these like little purples and blues in, in the metal um, we did some glazing it was pretty fun so if you like that sort of stuff check it out it's pretty cool um, so he's coming along really nice I'm happy with how that's gone um, I did a little bit more on this between the last hobby vlog and this, I've started on the, on the, on the arm there, uh, that forearm. So he's getting close to where I can um, start working on details. His arm is almost finished. So that's pretty cool. So he'll definitely get onto the, I think the bone and stuff like that for this one. So that'll be good. And um, what else? So I haven't done any more on those, but I brought these other two in from the, uh, the Beast Grave, um, set just because I might be able to start doing some of the skin or the armor on some of those just to start them off so that I can play around with some ideas um, for some other models so that's really cool so hopefully I'll get onto those as well and then we've got my printing so I'm hoping that the the frozen uh, 4k mini uh, printer works I'm going to about to start it up and uh, see if I can get the, the printer going I've got my last couple of denizens, denizens of Catan uh, busts from that series that I want to try to print out so uh, you might see those this week um, if I'm really good and it prints fast I might even be able to get uh, some base colors on that as well but that might be going a bit too far a bit too um, a bit too crazy um, it's going to be the Easter long weekend here in Australia this week so I won't be able to do much over the weekend I'll be working but um, yeah I'm hoping I can get a bit further along but we'll see we'll see what happens so yeah that's where I'm at um, I hope all your hobby projects are starting off well this week. Uh, I'm feeling pretty pumped and pretty pretty happy about it all. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, I guess. All right, catch you soon. All right, so it's uh, midweek and I'm back into it. Um, so yeah, where are we at? Well, I haven't got that far, to be honest with you. <laughs> So the, the hobby side of things hasn't gone super fast. Um, basically, I've had issues with the printers, um, doing my other Blight of God stuff. And uh, yeah, so my main printer, my Form 2, it's starting to, uh, I don't know, play up. It's, it's something to do with the laser, I think, the, like the light, the way it um, cures the, the, the layers. But they're starting to peel and, and come away and stuff. So yeah, that's sort of pretty bad so I've got to try to figure that out so I'm not going to be able to restart the printers until next week I think and uh, see if I can fix it so I've got the other new printers these frozen ones and I've started to try to muck around with this um, the 4k mini but even that hasn't been good so like I set it up um, you know like online if you have a look at people that have used these printers they have glowing reports about them but I can tell you that it's not that great so far um, I know that these things aren't as plug and play as a, as a form printer is, but um, just anyone who's interested in getting a Frozen. Um, so this is the, the 4K Mini. And yeah, the so I set it up. The, the build plate was fine. It, it leveled um, and all that stuff. And, you know, a fresh tank with new resin straight in. I went to, um, you know, um, do their test piece, which is like a little ring. And the first one failed. It didn't even work. So then I'm like, oh, okay. So then I had to clean it all out again and start again. And then, uh, and I used fresh resin again. I didn't use the same resin. And this time I made sure the room was very dark because what I've noticed is that their resin is like really sensitive to light. So the form uh, resin, if you've ever used a form two printer, their resin's really robust. It'll stay in light for ages without <clears throat> any of the liquid curing or any little particles forming. But this uh, frozen uh, resin, which is something no one's ever talked about, like I haven't heard anyone say this on a YouTube video about a frozen um, printer or, or any of these like um, cheaper style LCD printers. Um, 
certainly the frozen resin is extremely sensitive to light so you start getting like little films of, of, of particles of, um, of uh, solidified resin straight away as soon as you take the, the, the lid off it almost happens within a minute of, of that and that's not even direct sunlight or anything that's just like in the room it starts to do that um, any bounce light or anything from any window at all um, that UV light is going to start to cure it. So that's really interesting because no one's ever talked about that. So you've got to be super fast. You can't have that thing open to exposed light for very long at all, like half a minute, something like that. Um, at least that's what I experienced when I first did it. It might have just been, I don't know, maybe that, that was, it's just like, like it's an old batch of resin they've sent me or something, I don't know. But um, like the first time around when it failed, there was an entire film, like almost a layer of solidified resin that was in there when it started. So I don't know whether that was in the bottle or not or what, but it, very, very strange. So anyway, I started it again. And the second time I got the ring out, but the ring has tons and tons of um, problems with it, like gaps and like where it's lifted off from the, from the tank um, and it's like peeled away. And then there's all these stepping lines in it. Now, outside of that, the, the detail like in between those bad areas is really, really good. Like it is crisp, like what people say about it's true. It does give a really good result, but with so many defects going on, um, that good result is like, you know, not usable, right? So yeah, I'm a bit disappointed about that. And the main thing that I've noticed is the the smell of the resin compared to form two printers is crazy. It's so toxic especially if you're in a small space like I am, it's very, very toxic. So if you're using one of these things, you're going to have to come up with some kind of uh, much, much more, um, I guess, uh, aerated space to put it in because it's going to gas out your room quick smart. It's uh, very, very toxic. And um, yeah, so that... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, kind of depressed me a bit because I've wasted a lot of cash on, on getting these things thinking, oh, that'll be a good solution. I'll be able to have multiple printers running. But um, it's very different to the Formlabs printers. So, um, yeah, my next task is to um, basically go through the troubleshooting and the, the steps to uh, service the, the Form 2 and try to clean the, the mirrors inside and make sure there's no dust or anything happening with them. And hopefully that'll work. And then retest again. And then maybe I'll have to maybe rebuy the tank and the resin and, and do fresh start on that and see if that fixes it. Um, but I'm not quite sure yet. So if that one is truly failed and I can't get it to fix, and then I'm stuck with these other printers, the other ones will seem very finicky. And this space, I mean, is really not good for that kind of um, those kind of that kind of resin because yeah, I had headaches and like feeling sick straight after it. Like it was so, even with the windows open and everything, it didn't really work. So yeah, anyone out there thinking about this stuff, make sure you have a very well ventilated space. I may have to get like an air purifier or something like that um, to, to handle the, the, the fumes, but it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I didn't really expect it to be quite as bad because, you know, I've been working with the form printer for like three or four years and it's been totally fine. But um yeah, that was a bit of an eye opener. So there is a reason why you pay the, you know, $7,000 Australian for a Form 2 as opposed to, you know, 700 or 1000 for uh, one of the other ones. Um, there's definitely a, a difference. Um, but, you know, the, the quality that I got out of that ring that wasn't damaged um, was actually very crisp. Like it was very sharp, like uh, much sharper than the Form 2. So if I could get that to print clean, it probably would be better than a Form 2, like what people have like sort of commented on when they've tested them side by side. Um, it does actually do quite crisp de detail. I don't have one here to show you because I threw it out in disgust, but uh, next time I do one, I'll try to show it maybe on camera so you can see. But um, yeah, anyway, that's my adventures into that. That's kind of put me off track a bit, but I have managed to, now we get onto the hobby stuff, um, I have managed to um, get further on uh, Typhus here. So he's got his armor done. And I'm just working on the bone and the metal at the moment. I'm going to go back into that, that armor and put a bit of staining and stuff in there and all that sort of thing and all the drips and everything. But, you know, the basic colors and everything are down. And, um, yeah, so he's coming along. I don't know when I'll finish him. I'm hoping by next week sometime so I can at least show you something new. Um, but, yeah, it's going much slower. I put away the death shroud and stuff because I'm never going to get onto them yet. Um, and then I've got these out just to muck around. I've got an idea for the armor there. So I'm going to try using, I bought some new paints. I'm going to try mucking around uh, with these sort of off um, sort of skin tone. Oh, this one here, I think it is. Wait, there's another one. Where is it? This, yeah. So these, these two skin tones here, 
going to muck around with them and uh, use some of that cold grey I used in one of my tutorials for the um, for my um, my uh, Blight King and muck around with that and maybe a little bit of the Screaming Skull as well and do some sort of like pale armor on this guy but treat it like flesh so do all of the all of the subsurface um, layers and like all the all the glazing and stuff like that different colors and build it up sort of a bit like uh, flesh tones but as armor so I think that might be kind of interesting and you get like a nice pallid um, tone for him it could be really cool maybe contrast that with some of these greens or maybe like uh, some scarlet reds or something um, to contrast it so that's going to be another little project I've got I don't think I'll do a tutorial for that because I want to try to you know try some new techniques and figure it out first and I might do it on another one but um, yeah that's pretty much where I'm up to um, I've already shown you that on the axe and everything so I have to show you that again but yeah that's pretty much it for the hobby stuff I've started my first miniature sculpting for the bladder gods range which is pretty exciting I will have something to show for that but um, not for a while I've got to get these printers fixed before I can even print anything so yeah it'd be great to show that I'm doing like a wraith um, so if you go to my Instagram, um, I've shown pictures of that, but it's a pretty cool uh, sculpt. If you go to the website, the Bloody Gods website, you'll see it. But um, yeah, that'll be really fun if I can get that to actually work. So otherwise, that's where I'm at. Hopefully tomorrow I might have something else to show. We'll wait and see. Um, so yeah, I'll probably catch you then, I suppose. All right, see you soon. Okay, I'm back. So I thought I'd bring, I'd bring you back in just uh, one more time. It uh, doesn't look like I'm going to get much more time over the weekend, so I thought I'd just uh, show you some stuff that I got uh, for the Flesh Eater Quartz. Um, yeah, because I'm not going to get much more time to do any painting, so, um, well, a little bit, but it won't be enough for the vlog and stuff. So, yeah, I got a box of these guys here, which are fantastic for, you know, bases and conversions and all kinds of things. So that'll be good on the Flesh Eater Quartz. And then I got two more of these guys. So one, there he is and another one sorry i can't get it like fully on the screen um so yeah that's going to be really cool so um yeah i'm looking forward to mucking around with these i think they're going to be awesome um yeah i've got some ideas like build up the bases with those um those skulls and make sort of like you know flesh mounds or um you know sort of mittens you know of the, where they've been eating and um, I'd love to do some fresh sculpts for their faces and do some more vicious looking uh, ghouls. That'd be great. Because um, some of the heads aren't quite what I'd like for, for ghouls. Like some of them are cool, but some of them I think need to be a bit more, um, a bit more vicious. So I'm going to muck around with that. And, uh, but I need to get those printers running. So that's the big problem. So hopefully I can uh, get those running and then I'll be able to do a bunch of little conversions and things. And um, yeah, that it should be really cool. And who knows, maybe in the future, I'll just offer them up on my website and you know, that way other people can get, get access to it as well. And uh, do, some, do some different things for these. Cause I really feel like, um, you know, this army has so much potential, but it just has such a small range, you know, like um, had a few more things in it, it'd be great. That new cursed city, that, uh, that vampire uh, model, the it's like a Vargulf or something like that. Uh, looks really cool so i hope they do more of that stuff i hope that comes out with soul blight because that'll that'll really help um you know just uh bring a bit of life to this army and add a few more variety of uh, things to the things you can add in so yeah hopefully we'll get a bit of that but um in the meantime if i can get those printers running i'll definitely be doing some conversions and little uh, head swaps and and uh maybe some other little swaps of their arms and so on and and just you know muck around with them i think that'd be really cool maybe some uh you know, tombstones and different things on the bases or some cracked, um, you know, um, sandstone blocks and stuff like that. Uh, anything sort of gothic and, and, and old like that would be really cool. But um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's where I'm at with that. I think that's going to be really exciting. Um, but otherwise, not much more. So um, I hope you guys are all enjoying your hobby week and getting it done over Easter. I'll be working, so, you know, I'm not going to get a lot done. But anyway... Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and if you have, please subscribe and all that stuff. It really helps me out, but otherwise I guess I'll catch you on the next one. All right. See you later.